What is going on, Los Angeles? Welcome to the LA Football Victory Bell Podcast here live at the beautiful Rose Bowl. We're here for the big game. Joined by our panel, we got Phil, Alfred, Will, Jamal, fellas. What is going on? How are we doing? How are you doing? We're here. We're actually here. It, it, the time has come. We're, we finally got here, right? I will say this. I will say this. This is the best stadium in all of America. Ooh. There's no wow. better stadium than the Rose Bowl. That, that's why the BCS consists on having the Rose Bowl. That's why the college football playoff wants to have the Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl is the best stadium in all of college football. But with that being said, it's kind of like the Dodgers. We have three stadiums in California. SC has three, two stadiums in, in college football. We own the Rose Bowl, so we're just here to get our lease back and get everything going. But I'm excited to be here. Got I got my ring. Yeah. I, I got the I got the I got the lease today. I got the own the Rose Bowl ring. This is against <laughs> Illinois and Juice, Juice Williams, just uh, so you guys know. But this 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 is the best stadium. This atmosphere is what college football is about, right? Yes, this is so exciting, and I haven't been on this side never really been on this side and seeing this side is like it's exciting this is great i'm i'm happy to be here we're finally here this is exciting i think i have four plays in me today <laughs> i have four it has that might to be enough coach <laughs> Rowe, that might be enough it has to be day. it has to be three and out though <laughs> I, I, I can't give you anything past that it has to be three and out yeah yeah uh, you got four gentlemen. plays not in the same feeling? series feeling great <laughs> right we were the game as, as alfred said it is finally here the biggest victory bell game, in my opinion, in 17 years since 2005, and we're here just hours away from kickoff. It's going to be a very, very special night. Senior night at the Rose Bowl. DTR, last time running out of that tunnel. I don't know what his emotions are going to be. He could probably sprint 26 miles back to campus with the amount of energy, but that's how I'm feeling. Thriller, how you feeling? Feeling fantastic. Last time DTR Charbonnet are going to be playing in the Rose Bowl. It is iconic stadium, as Alfred alluded to. It's going to come down to the run game for UCLA. I'm very excited to see what we can bring to the table with that. A lot of different opinions. I'm excited to get to yours because we. I was shocked by Alfred's opinion in the pregame post. Uh, he's going to have to say it to the audience. I don't know if they're going to agree with it, but I'm excited to hear it live on a podcast. Yeah, well, and Bruin fans are hoping not the last time of the Rose Bowl. Some stuff's got to happen, but maybe they make it to the Rose Bowl game. Phil, you made the drive down. How are we feeling? Man, I'm loving it out here. The atmosphere is electric. There's a buzz all over the place. The weather is beautiful. You smell the tailgate smells. You hear the tailgate sounds. You get that feeling. You know that this is a big game. It means a lot. Uh, you know, we're out here at the Rose Bowl, the iconic Rose Bowl, and uh, I, I can't wait for the game. Uh, but uh, with everybody here in a full house, we finally packed the Rose Bowl for once. UCLA's been unable to do that for years. But now, thanks to the Trojans, we got it done together. And you are going to see a Trojan victory today because the, tro the stars are shining bright and there are more stars for the Trojans than there are for the Bruins. Well, we'll get to those predictions here in a second. But yeah, it's a great day here in Pasadena. You know, for all the, the crap UCLA gets nationally, there's not many tailgate experience is as good as the Rose Bowl tailgate on Brookside Golf Course. The weather is always beautiful and it did not disappoint yet again today. So we're not going to take a ton of time in this because we're, we're enjoying ourselves, having some beers. We had some broths, had the barbecue out. We want to get to some predictions. We did our key matchups last episode. So we don't really have to dive into that. Let's do predictions and if we feel like talking more into it, we can go. But Phil, I mean, Alpha, let's start with you because you, uh, you, you, you got you guys want me to go first? Yeah. I, yes, sir. I, I, so I'm gonna I'm give a whole analyst because we're not gonna go long. So I'm gonna get everything going. I will say this, and I've been thinking about this since we did our show on Tuesday. And this game's not gonna go how people think it is. And and I know a lot of people are high on DTR. A lot of people are high on Charbonnet. So let's talk sports psychology, right? This is probably the biggest game they've ever been in their in their, in their career. Right? Is. This is the biggest game. Bobo's one of their star players, and he played at Duke. He's never been in a big game. Right. This is this is 70,000 people. This is loaded on the UCLA side. Right. This is something they've never been a part of. But let's flip sides. Caleb Williams played in the Red River rivalry. Right. So did Mario Williams. Lincoln Riley's been here before. These guys almost went to the college football playoff last year. They played in a big game last year for a bowl game. Right. You look at Jordan Addison. Their brawl with West Virginia is a huge game. They sell out Heinz Field, which isn't Heinz Field anymore, but it's neither here nor there. If you look at the psyche of this game, this is a normal game for USC. This is an extremely big game for UCLA. I don't think that they are ready for this atmosphere. They've never done it before, and this atmosphere is a lot different than people expect. On the other side, 
There's people have who are already done for. Travis Dye, even if he's just a leader, he could talk these guys through this situation and it won't be a big deal. Like, hey, it's all right. It's just another game. How do you talk people through where you can no longer hear? How do you talk people through when the game really doesn't go your way and there's a lot of people screaming, a lot of things? I don't think UCLA is ready for that. With that being said, though, it's still a rival game. It's still a cross town rivalry. Yeah. It's still a victory bell game. We're still at the Rose Bowl. This is a game that you always wait for in Southern California. And these games never go the way that they go. If it was my choice, in my opinion, and like I always say, I don't know, I'm just a broadcaster, but I don't think there's going to be a lot of points scored today. I think Trojans covered by 10, 23 13, Trojans win. 23 13. Wow. 13 points. And let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. And I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, the defense can't stop. A lot of weird things happen when you play in these games, right? A lot of weird things happen. And there's a lot of weird things that's happened today in college football. And that thing goes for the whole weekend. So I think this is one of those things where it's going to be a weird game. You're going to see you're going to see drives, but you're going to see punts. You're going to see drives, but you're going to see field goals. You're, it's going to be very few big plays that's going to happen today because of the rivalry aspect, right? So. 23-13 is what I see. SC wins. A lot of things are starting to fall their place. I still hope they don't go to the college football playoff. <laughs> right? So I st I'm still there. But a lot of things a lot of things are happening today. And I just see a 23-13 game. I, I, I just feel it like it's going to be one of those weird games where you see a lot of stops. Big plays, but it won't amount to anything. And that's fine. And you got to keep your calm and those type of cools. But it's the SC-UCLA game. It's the battle for victory bill. They're going to make stops when needed on both sides. If the... Pete Carroll used to always say this, better teams play better for longer periods of time. Who's going to be the better team and who's going to play better for the longer period of time? And I think I think SC will play better for a longer period of time. And I think it will come down to they'll score the touchdown and they'll get the ball warmer time and they'll have a drive and they'll kick a field goal, 23-13, USC wins. All right, Jamal, counter, what do you think? No, I love, I love what Coach Rowe is saying and I, I appreciate it. Here's my counter to you, Coach Rowe. Yes. I think Caleb Williams and Addison and Mario have played in bigger games. They have never played in the Victory Bell game. And when you talk about their comments this week, it's just another game, Caleb was saying. Addison not really familiar with the rivalry. Shane Lee not even realizing why the Tommy Trojan is taped up. They don't have, and this is sort of one of the detriments of the transfer portal, is when you come in as a one-year rental you don't understand what this rivalry really means to the city. So they are, they have played in big games, but they've never played in this game. And when you flip that around with DTR, all the things that he said this week, how much this game means to him, his legacy, his senior night. Charbonnet came back for unfinished business to take UCLA to that next level and establish that program going into the Big Ten. And when you talk about how Chip is anchoring this game in terms of what his trajectory is going to be, I think this game, you're absolutely right, this game means more to UCLA and that is why they are going to win the game because they are going to exercise a passion and an intensity that I think it's going to be hard for those USC guys to match later in this game when they have not been exposed to the rivalry. I think Charbonnet goes for 30 plus carries, 200 plus yards and I said last year, Ryan, who my X Factor was, Ooh. this year's X Factor is Keegan Jones. Keegan Jones is going to have two touchdowns in this game because he is going to get matched up level to level with those USC linebackers and that is going to be money in key situations. Keegan Jones, Charbonnet, Kaz Allen's going to give it a go. Look for Michael Azike and Hudson Habermel to be two of the four leading receivers for UCLA today because of that tight end susceptibility on defense. Bobo is going to make enough third down catches but this is going to be a ground and pound situation for UCLA. Bruins will win 41-34. All right. I, 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 hold on. I, I will counter this. Just to, just my rebuttal. Let's just say that we're in a debate team. Here's my, here's my rebuttal to your rebuttal. Let me ask you this question. Out of all the run yards that USC has given up this year, what running back has actually beat them? Right? Rice, they gave up over 150 yards. Washington State, the running back, broke a record for his school. Out of all the run yards that SC has given up this year, what running back has actually beat them? What running back have they played? 
They, they have not played a running back of the caliber of Zach Charbonnet, 2022 Doak Walker semifinalist. Even Oregon State, the killer freshman that they have this year who's tearing it up, he didn't play very much in that game. And they still, really with Oregon State's second and third running backs, were able to do things at will for the first three quarters of this game. I don't think they can stop Charbonnet. He is an NFL back. He's a second-round pick in the NFL. Really should be a first-round pick in the NFL. 30-plus, Alfred. 200 plus for Charbonnet, and the Bruins will go back to back in the victory bell for the first time since 2014. I told you the victory bell is just on leash. You guys need it. You guys are almost bankrupt, so we just let you guys borrow for collateral. All right, Phil, your prediction in this game? Uh, well, my my counterpart here predicted low. I'm going to go high because I see this as a high scoring game. I don't really see defense being too much of a factor, except for maybe four stops. That's all that USC needs to get is four stops. Now, where they get them, that's the question. But as long as they get one at the end of the game and give this offense a chance to score and move forward, Caleb Williams is that guy. He's a Heisman candidate. He should win the Heisman. He scored 15 touchdowns in the last three weeks. I don't expect that to slow down today. I see it as USC 35, UCLA 24. Ooh, all right. A little higher scoring. Will, bring it to the promised land your take and, and prediction well man it's going to be a fun game two diverse offenses in very different ways we're talking about the pass happy usc trojans especially about travis die today and the number nine nationally ranked run offense in ucla bruins so you have very contrasting offense if ucla wants to win this game and i'm predicting them to win they're going to milk the clock. They're going to feed the guy that's gotten them to this point. It's Zach Charbonnet. I know I sound like a broken record, but this is the best back UCLA has had in 20-plus years. Maybe the best since Gaston Green, if we're being honest. A semifinalist for the Doak Walker Award. Feed the bees. Feed Colson Yankoff after. Get those four- to five-yard gains. Take the clock. Keep as many chances as you can away from Caleb Williams. I'm going 38-27 UCLA in this one. All right. I'm going to play the Kirk Herbson. Herb Street play that I'm calling the game, so I don't have to give a prediction. But I will say I think it's going to be high scoring. I, don't, I, I just don't see it being a defensive slugfest with these defenses. But like you said, this game is different. Crazy things happen in this game. It's very unpredictable. But I think I think they'll hit the over on that 76. Ryan, the one thing I'll add to, to, to my USC brethren here of LAFB, I've been telling this to some friends all week. This is a cape game. This is a Superman cape game opportunity for Caleb Williams. If he puts the cape on, that is what is going to enable USC to stay in this game. Because if you look at no Travis Dye, arguably your best offensive weapon, you don't really know what you're going to get from Addison. You don't know what you're really going to get from Mario. You don't know what you're going to get from Eric Gentry. You don't know how the Michael Jacksons and the Brendan Rices are going to play in this game. All the guys you mentioned, Alfred, big game experience, not those guys. So the supporting cast around him is weaker going into this game. He's going to have to put the cape on and go for 450 and five touchdowns for SC to be in this game and, and ultimately prevail if they can. I just think that's too tall an ask for a player like Caleb Williams. Great player, arguably the best player in America, but that is a very tall ask. Bruins are going to do this 41-34. If I'm not mistaken, Caleb Williams went for like 423 and five touchdowns in Salt Lake City. He also did it the following week. So, yeah. I mean, it's not. And they it's lost. Not that <laughs> and they <laughs> lost. <laughs> You're, right. You're right. And they came down, it came down to a loss. So we talked about that. But at the, at the so at the end of the day, right, you, you, you have to. I understand. I get it. This is a big time rivalry, but you have to pretty much look at your Jimmys and Joes, right? And I'm I'm gonna look at it from a coaching prospect. I'm gonna look at my I'm gonna look at it from my Jimmys and my Joes, right? And I'm gonna go back to Charbonnet can run for as many yards as he wants, but it seems like every time they play a running back that the SC is outmatched against, they can't, the team can't score, right? Arizona State has a running back that's probably number two, number three running. He ain't back Charbonnet. In, I, hold on. He ain't hold, Charbonnet. Hold on. Number two, number three <laughs> running back in the conference. He's not Charbonnet, 100 percent, right? But I don't think that the running game is a big uh, worry for Alex Grinch, which it should be. If I, if it's me, stop the run, make them pass. Low percentage plays. It is. It's neither here nor there. But the way that this defense is set up, you could run the ball all day. That's fine. But we're not going to let you score. They're on that bend but don't break bottle, which doesn't work. If you don't believe me, ask Raheem Morris. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's like. You're, you're putting all your eggs in the basket on Charbonnet, but at the end of the day, what is your second option? If I take Charbonnet out the game, who's going to beat me, right? And you're going to say, all right, we're going to go with Bobo. I'm not worried about him because at the end of the day, I need to see him. 
I need to see him play in this type of atmosphere. He's never played in this type of atmosphere. And that's the most important thing to me because when you can't hear, it changes everything. And I will always revert back to that. When you can no longer hear, it changes the whole style of play. The game changes completely for you. Like, so I need you, if Bobo's gonna beat us 100%, UCLA deserves to win. But I'm gonna make Bobo, be, if I'm calling this game and I'm scheming this game, I'm making Bobo beat me. DTR is gonna do what he's gonna do. I can't stop DTR. He's been in this conference for five years. He is what he is. I'm not taking anything from him. He can have everything he has, but I'm not gonna let Charbonnet beat me. I want Bobo to beat me. And if Bobo beats us, then 100%, he deserves to win. I think you're putting too much faith in the USC defense, if I'm being honest. I'm, I'm not. Alex, <laughs> I'm not. Alex I'm not. Grinch is not a great coach, in my opinion, man. And you, you look at, you say, without Charbonnet, who's going to beat you? We saw it a couple weeks ago. I mean, this is the likes against Arizona State. Chip ran for the most yards he's ever run for in the UCLA program without Charbonnet. It was 420 yards. He was running at six yards a clip. Like, it was not even close. So without Charbonnet, he's proven he can run without it. I'm more worried for you guys on your terms of defense and how you're going to defend Chip Kelly and his run game because the run defense has not been it for USC this year. I just think Charbonnet is going to have a big day, and if not Charbonnet, bring on Keegan Jones, bring on Colson Yankov. Hell, we'll even get deeper into the depth chart if we need to be. I think it's going to be one of those games. And the, the counter to that is if Charbonnet is the one that's getting off, they're not going to be able to keep pace with the USC offense. If you're relying on a, on a running game to squeeze all the air out of the ball and, and to just run off the clock, if USC is able to score quickly, they can take Charbonnet out of the game. And once Charbonnet's out of the game, you have real problems. Biggest thing I'll add to that is Charbonnet's averaging about 7.8 yards per carry. So they're getting great distance and efficiency. So it's not like it's slowing the game down. And if Charbonnet has had those games, and I'm not picking a side, but Charbonnet has had those games with 11 carries and 180 yards. So they haven't really slowed the game down with the running game. So that's going to be the tough, the tough ask for Grinch and company. I, so I, I understand what you guys are saying, right? I understand that. And, and, and I'm just going off of what, what I've gone off of the product that SC has put on the field, right? And the very first game, we already thought, oh, shit, here we go. Back to the same old SC. They gave up 130 yards to a Rice running back, 66 points, right? They gave up 180 to a Washington State running back, right? And they still win that, won that game. I don't think that there's as much emphasis. I don't think, and it's weird, and I can't explain it, but I'm just going off of what I see. But I don't think that giving up big runs affects USC's defense. And this is just what I see, and I get what you guys are saying. And I'm not defending Alex Grinch, but I just I've seen big running, big running games against USC, but I've also seen big victories. But like, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, right? Because like my theory, my my prediction is it's a weird game. I played in a game when we were the number two team in the nation, and we only scored nine points, right? <laughs> so it's it's a weird game. But if it is a high scoring game, and you guys want to play score for score. I don't think that you, I don't think UCLA has the horses to play score for score, right? Because you have, you have a guy that is good and then you have a guy that's okay and you have a guy that's average. We have two guys that are excellent and then we have a guy that is good. So if you want to go horse for horse and you want to make it a horse race, we could do that. But I don't think that's the game that Chip really wants to play, even though that's his theory, because in reality, you can't match up. So, Albert, I mean, one thing I'll say here is... Last point. Last point, I'm going to say two things. So I, I, I agree with what you're saying schematically. I think the reason I'm going slightly under is I think both teams want to be able to control some element of the clock. Even when you look at USC this year, they've had a lot of drives under five plays and scored, but they haven't been this Oregon blur offense this year. They want to choose some, some clock as well. I actually think each team is only going to have the ball nine times. And so when you talk about, you know, how fast you score, I think it's irrelevant if you just score when you have the ball. Whether that is in seven minutes or whether that's in 70 seconds, you're going to, as long as you take care of your business, it's like a great tennis player, all you got to do is hold serve. And against these defenses, it's going to be very challenging. And we're talking a lot about score for score, shot for shot for UCLA. I think the big matchup on the other end is what UCLA is going to do with Caleb Williams. What is he gonna? What what is Chip and McGovern gonna dial up with the by far the most talented quarterback that they played against this year? 
lesser versions of Caleb Williams like Bo Nix and Jaden Delora have really bothered this UCLA team and totally taken them out schematically of what they want to do. I, I am adamant that McGovern has to employ a spy on Williams today. Whether that's John John Vons, whether that's Carl Jones Jr., you have to invoke the spy. And the one thing I've been noticing, Alfred, with, with Caleb, he's holding the ball a little bit too long the last few weeks. He's getting into some, some bad habits here, and the down-the-field accuracy is a question. And I think the difference in this game, he may throw a ball or two up. Everyone is waiting for DTR to make the big mistake. I actually think that mistake is going to come from Caleb on a down-the-field throw, and that's going to be the difference in the game. We shall see. Shocking. Both our UCLA guys pick UCLA, and both our USC guys pick <laughs> USC. Either way, going to be a fantastic game. It's a beautiful day. 5 o'clock kickoff coming up here soon. Gentlemen, Phil, Alfred, Will, Jamal, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure doing the show, the series. Let's have a blast. I think we should game. do one more. Fight on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think we might have to. I think we should have recap. Recap. We have to so, do the recap. We'll do the recap, so stay tuned for that. Everyone enjoy the game. Be well. This is the LA Football Network. We're Go out. Trojans.